It says over here, left order with Ali Elohim, Ruch Nachonah Kadesh Bekirbi. David Amelech, he asks Hashem to give him a pure heart. Ruch Nachon Kadesh Bekirbi, to revive within him a new spirit. Come, Rabbi, sit down. Perish of Ora Gadol, Rav Moshe Al Sheikh Zal. Rav Moshe Al Sheikh explains this Pasuk. The Rizal says that Rab Al Sheikh, his perush is one of the seventy perush that were given to Moshe Misinai. The Hilig, a very Hilig Yid, we'll call it. David Amelech was that davening to Hashem that he shouldn't have to come back in a Gilgul again. He should just come into this world one time. He should fulfill whatever he needs to fulfill in this world one time. He says if a person doesn't work on himself to achieve his full potential, to be able to achieve whatever he's supposed to achieve in this world, he has to come back again into this world in order to fix himself. Every neshama comes into this world as an opportunity to fulfill itself, to fix itself, to be able to fulfill its potential. Everybody to his own level of potential. The Villagon says that if a person doesn't work on his midot, if it doesn't work on himself to change himself, then there's no point for him to be alive, the Villagon says. <laughs> then the Villagon says that there's no point for a person to live in this world if a person doesn't work on his midot. If a person doesn't work on his Torah, a person doesn't work on his Yidat Shemayim, somebody wants to come and he wants to speak Lash and Hor about somebody. What are you supposed to do? Say, this is not for me. I don't Just listen to it. This is not for me. I don't want to hear anything negative. You have something good to say? You could stop him. Tell him, you have something good to say? I want to hear it. You have something not good to say? I don't want to hear it. Exactly. Right? A person has to be careful, I mean, to fulfill Torah and Mitzvot to the fullest extent that he can. And a person has to come back and fix whatever he was lacking from the first time that he came into this world. That's what Davon Amalek was praying for. That he shouldn't come back in a Gilgul. He says, however, there's two different types of Gilgulim. It's a big Chiddush over here. Most of us are under the impression that Gilgul means a person dies. A person's soul comes back into this world and goes into somebody else. Right? But really, there's a different type of Gilgul as well he brings over here. It says, well, a person is alive in this world, another soul that needs to be fixed comes into this person in this world and gets fixed within this person while he's alive. Meaning to say, if somebody died and he needs to come back in a Gilgun, not always does he actually have to come back in a new body and, re, and be alive again. It could be that soul could come inside somebody that's alive. We need to say somebody that could be sitting here, there could be another soul that can go into this person, right? And this person will receive his tikkun through the person that's alive. How? He says that when a person comes back in this world and he wants to go inside of a person in order for him to get fixed, he goes into a person and all the Torah that this person learns, all the mitzvot that this person does and everything that this person does also fixes that other soul that's inside of him in order to be metakin whatever that soul needs. Right? He says something very interesting. He says there's one mitzvah that people take a little bit lightly and they think that uh, whatever, it's not something so, but it's very severe. He says what's that? The mitzvah of Hashavat Avedah. If a person finds something that doesn't belong to him, and now he has to return it. Now he has to return it. Right? He sees something that belongs to somebody. And he just takes it and he says, whatever, the guy lost it. He probably gave up on it. Right? And he says, doesn't want to, he doesn't return it. He could return it. He could find somebody. There's Timanim. He could find the person that it belongs to. Such a person is obligated to come back in a Gilgul in order to be, be able to return whatever he stole from this individual. Either to him or children. Somehow it's going to come back to the person that he took it from and he never returned it. <laughs> Never returned it. Therefore, does that mean it's going for back for a short life? <laughs> maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. Until he fixes it. Until he fixes it. Right? So he brings over here many different types of Gilgulim that people could go through. Right? Many different types of Gilgulim that a person can go through. But I don't really want to get into all this Gilgulim and all the different types of Gilgulim that a person could go through. I, I want to go into more halacha today. I want to go into more halacha today. And we'll continue this next week. I want to speak about halachas that are very pertaining to a lot of people today and a lot of places today. A lot of people, they like to believe interesting things. 
I'll show you what I mean in a second. There's a bright arm. There's a Tosefta, I should say, in the Gemara and Shabbat at the end. I think it was uh, Perak Bav and Perak Zayin. This is Gemara Shabbat. This is a fully loaded Gemara over here. Okay, right here. Tosefta and Shabbat at the end. And Perak Zayin. Right, the, the Tosefta over here speaks about all different types of things that people are not allowed to do which relate to strange beliefs. We need to say it's asur for us to do anything which is a strange type of a thing that we believe in. For example, I'll give you an example, red string. People put a red string on their hand for Ayn Hara. Are you allowed to wear a red string? Does it work? Who says it works? Where did it come from? 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 That's the question. Where do you see that it came from? Kevrachal. Right? It says over here, Haomer, Morin. Right? When a person comes along and he says that the day, the night goes after the day, like the Goyim do. He says that's, that's, uh, he says over here, it's Darche Morin, it's the way of Goyim. Right? To be able to think that the day, the night goes after the day. But it's not, uh, let, let's go on. He says over here, Person goes along. I don't know what time it is now. No, you say, say it as soon as possible. It says over here like this: A person that goes with a stick and he makes different signs for himself. He says that if I go this way, I'm gonna have bad luck. But if my stick falls this way, I'm gonna have good luck. Person sort of he believes in superstition, right? He believes in superstition, right? How many atir menotan? This is uh, so many different types of things that they fixed over here. Here, is a menachesh. A person is not allowed to do nichushim lo tenachashu. A person is not allowed to do things, different things, in order to create signs for himself to believe strange beliefs to create strange beliefs for himself. For example, the Gemara says that Tosef says how many naflam aklim yadi. A person is walking and a stick falls down. He says, oh, this is bad luck. If the stick fell down, it's mad, bad luck. That means where I'm going right now is not going to work out. I'm not allowed to go over there. Right? Or a person is driving and a cat, black cat drives by, walk around by, says, oh, this is already bad luck. I'm not allowed to go over there. And it's an Isr of Lotan HaChashu. It's the right of Lotan HaChashu. Right? Besides the fact that it's just a strange belief. But it's an Isr of the right of Lotan HaChashu. Nafla piti mi pi. Right? A person is eating, the bread falls out of his mouth. He says, oh, this is a sign from heaven that something's going to go wrong today. Or a sign from heaven that I'm going to lose money today. Right? All these different strep- strange things. Karali ish pluni. Right? Mechurai. He says, oh, somebody's calling me from the back. No, don't call me from the back. Come over here to the side. It's bad luck. You know, don't call me from the back. And all, the, all these strange different things that people believe in. Right? He says that. He says over here, a person says, hey, don't come to me, don't come to me in the morning. Don't ask me money for the morning. I don't want to give money in the morning. I don't know if I'm going to start in the morning. It's not, it's not a good sign. Or Motzei Shabbat. A person says, no, Motzei Shabbat, I don't buy anything. I don't want to spend money. It's a bad sign for the rest of the week. Or Rosh Chodesh. A person says, Rosh Chodesh, I don't start anything. Why? I don't want to start this for the whole month. It's going to be a siman for the whole month. All these different types of strange beliefs. He says over here that it's all a story that Tosef says. The truth is, if there's a Tosefta and there's also a Gemara. The Gemara does not, uh, the many, many of the post came, a lot of the things that we mentioned here, many of the post came, they don't, uh, we'll see. Let's look on the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch says, right, En shu'alin v'chozim v'kochavim v'lo begoralot. A person is not allowed to go to fortune tellers, a person is not allowed to make her. raffles, a person is not allowed to do things in order to be able to find that the true, the, 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 the future, and he says over here, if a person goes ahead and he goes to people that tell the future, for example, those people that sit with those round bowls, you know, those little things that tell you stuff, or you go to uh, all these fake rabbis, all these fake tablets that they have today, right? You go to them, you try to speak to them, they don't know anything in Torah from A to Z, but they have a line waiting for them all the way outside. Why? They do weird things, they wear weird things, they say weird things, they do weird things. Business is working. Uh, business is working. And they're able to impress people and confuse people and to get people that they, to think that they're doing something weird, right? And people, they love it, they believe in it, right? They start to fall for it. And then you come to him and he starts telling you, and I remember one time somebody told me, come, come, there's a big Kabbalist over here, he's in my basement, come, he's staying over here, he's 
going around doing things for people. They bring me to his basement, and I go over there. No weird individual. I didn't want this. This guy that took me there's a friend. I, I want to you know. I said okay. I went with him. I was already right there. Anyways, I went with him. But you did well. But what? You did well. Huh? But you did well. I was already there. I was in his house. No, I, but it's not. A, he asked me, come, 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 come. I said, okay, I'll go out. Um, I know it's probably some bubble. Right? And I went over there. And I was curious. I asked him a question. He said, oh, this type of question. He says, I need to put boxes. I need to put money in the boxes. I need to ask the angels. He tells me to answer me. I told my friend, leave this clown alone. Get him out of your house. Find something better to do with your life. Right? But you find people that are like this that are weird. And a lot of people fall for it. You'd be surprised. A lot of people fall for it. Somebody one time called me. Middle of the night. He found some strange writing in his pillow or something like that with all different types of words. He was scared of some sort of a cameo or something like that. He asked me what to do with it. He said one time many years ago, he got it for Shalom Bayit and I don't know, something like that. I told him, take it, rip it up and throw it in the garbage. It's nothing. He opened it. It was just a whole bunch of Arabic words. Some guy probably wrote it. Some probably wrote it, found something on the street, gave it to him, took money from him and that's it. Right? People, they fall for all these stupid things, right? So a person that goes and he tries to find out the future, he goes and he says, what's going to be here? What's going to be there? Something like that is a sort to do. A person that goes and he tries to find out the future doesn't make a difference from who it is. It's over an answer of tamim tiyem and Hashem rokechad. A person has to be wholesome with Hashem. A person has to trust Hashem. A person has to know that the Kaddish Baruch is running the world and Hashem knows the future and Hashem knows what's good for you. A person needs to believe in Hashem Kachapratit. We have a Kaddish Baruch We don't need the future. We don't need these fortune tellers. We don't need all these babas. We have Hashem. We trust in Hashem. If something is going wrong, we read Tehilim. We do Teshuvah. We do Cheshvan and Nefesh. We try to understand what Hashem is trying to tell us. We try to pick up the message that Hashem is trying to tell us. <coughs> And the depth of a person goes to fortune tellers, to all these different types of people, to be able to find out the future or to find out something that happened in the past even. If a person wants to find out something happened in the past, why it happened or what happened in a mystical level, that's also going to be Asur. Right? And he says over here, interestingly enough, he says also if a person wants to go to people that are able to tell ast- astronomy, astronomy, astrology, astrology, horoscopes, right? All these different things. Right? So he says over here that a person wants to go and he wants to know what days are bad, what days are good, what month is good, what month is bad, right? Astrology, he says something like that, right? Is uh, He says that also, right, an Easter of Lotan HaChashu, and you're not allowed to believe in it, and if a person believes in it and he does something, based on it, he's over an Easter to right, the Rambam says. The Rambam says that astrology and all these things are all Sheker, and they're all fake, and the Torah wanted to keep us away from all these fake beliefs and all this nonsense. And therefore, if a person would believe in these things, and a person would do something based on these things, you'd open it to the right. Of. According to the Rambam, if a person would open up these Russian magazines, or this Chinese stuff, I don't know, right? And he believes in it, and he says, I'm going to buy this for good luck, and he's going to do it, he's going to be over in the right. Of. A but person... Oh, so we're going to get there. We're gonna get to we're gonna get to like we're gonna get to the Ramban sheet in one second. This is the, the Rambam held that all these things are all sheker and everything is kazav, it's all nonsense. And therefore if a person would believe it and do something based on it, for example, if a person would go to one of these Ruski ladies that they play cards and they make stuff fly in the air, I don't know, people tell me they make the cups move, you know what I'm talking about? Right? Somebody, somebody I don't know exactly what they do over there. Like, Lead. 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 For Ayn Hara. That's for removing Ayn Hara. We'll get there. I don't know. I'm just we'll get there. One thing at a time. <laughs> right. One thing at a time. Right. So when 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 a person when a person the according to the Rambam, if a person would read his astro- astrology for that day and they say, oh, today is bad luck for you. We'll get there, we'll get there. All the questions we'll say for the end. We'll do one question at a time. First, let's just get all the all the poskim, all the shitot a little bit. Let's get the main basic ideas, and then we'll get into all this other stuff. Right? So according to the Rambam, if a person would listen to his astrology, and he would go and read his horoscope online, and it says, today is a good day, you'll be successful in your business, make the first business deal that you do, and he goes and he reacts to it. It's over an Issa do right, according to the Rambam. It's over an Avera from the Torah. Right? Not only that, he says that the Ramban brings that sometimes these things are true. The Ramban says that that astrology is astrology, astrology, 
right? Astrology is true, right? However, it says the Torah asked it. Why? Because the Torah didn't want us to go and all of these strange beliefs and to be able to believe in things which are beyond our koach anyways. The Torah wanted us to trust in Hashem and to believe in Hashem. And since the Torah wanted to remove us from these fake beliefs, so therefore the Torah asked not to go after these things. However, he says, a person is not, he says that you're not allowed to really go and ask. It's also, right? It says, <clears throat> if a person did ask and he went to somebody real and they did tell him, the Rakhon to the Ramban, he says that a person should dive and he should do Masim Tovim, he should try to mevatel the Gezeira. A person shouldn't just say, ah, eh, whatever happens, happens. Right? Why? Because once he went to somebody real, for example, we find by Rabbi Akiva and his daughter, the star tellers, they told him that his daughter is going to die the night of his wedding. Rabbi Kiva didn't say, okay, I'm going to push off the wedding or nothing. He just went with it. But what? They davened and they prayed to Hashem to Mabata the Gezira. And a miracle happened for her. What happened? While she was in her room preparing, she had a, you know, they had a needle that they used to put the clips in to be able to hold up their hair. Right? And she, need, she needed to put it into the wall to hold it. And when she put it into the wall, there was a snake there. And she put, put it in the snake's face and she killed it. Right? Without even realizing. So, so Hashem saved her. But you see that Rabbi Kiva didn't say, oh, the stargazer said... She's gonna die that night. Let's change it. The way he prays and uh, the road. You know, anybody can pray. But it's an example for us. Rabbi Kiva didn't react and say, okay, I'm not gonna do it because the stargazers. However, the Ramban says that if something like that would happen, you know, you, would, you wouldn't just have to ignore it. You would actually have to take into consideration if the person would be real. He says, however, Right? If a person, according to the Rambam, this would be Aster. If a person would react to it, according to the Rambam, it wouldn't be Aster, but he shouldn't do it. So there is what to rely on, but however, a person should be Machmer. However, it says, this is all the people that were true. This is all the people that really knew what they were doing. But it says, nowadays, everybody's fake. It's all about the money. Right? Everybody's just doing it to make more money. They take advantage of weak people that are weak-minded, that don't know any better. A lot of times people don't know where to turn to, they're very depressed in life, they have difficulties all in them. And they turn to all these different people hoping that they'll be able to find some sort of a solution. Maybe he's real, maybe that one's real, maybe this one's real. Right, so somebody called me once and he was going to somebody, I don't want to mention names, and he was going to this individual who charges $180 to $300 a visit. He has a whole line of people over there, drives them Mercedes Benz. He probably makes a million dollars a year, taking advantage of weak people and convincing people that he knows the future and so on and so forth. Right, all these different con artists. Right, and then people go to them and say, Vijif, see Rabbi, Zengi Chochet. He's not a rabbi, he's uh, some Russia who found a businessman, right, who, who, who tries to fake it to make it. Right, so therefore, these type of people will be Issa do Oraita to talk to and to try to find out the future. I tell them, Rabbi, I'm going to do this and this. Right, tell me what's going to happen. Right, so you're not allowed to. Right, he's going to start telling you, oh, I see you already in your muzzle like this, I see in your muzzle like that. Leave this guy alone, get up, go home, make yourself a cup of tea, read some tealim. It'll be better off for you. All this stuff is a, is, is a sketch. So if a person would go to these people, right, to go and try to find out the future, or to try, try to find out these things, it's an Isser de Oraita. So there, there are some weapons <laughs> that people like Marsh, page. That's Gorala There, there is sourced, there is something called Gorala Gram, that a person is able, it's only for people that are in a very high level of spirituality. They're Kiddushim Torim, the Tamadi Chachamim. They have Siyat Deshmaya. They are allowed to make Goran Lagrad. Even then, it's only for life, like serious life matters. It's not for everyday questions. And it only works for questions that are undecidable through human logic and you need divine intervention. Right? Then there is such a concept. But for every single individual... Wait, I never in my life saw Gedolim do this stuff. Right? I never saw Chaim Kenyevsky do it. My, uh, my husband into the Goralot. He charged two hundred dollars. I tell him, call him, call him. I had ten thousand dollars in my pocket. I put on the table. I said, it's you. He says, why? I said, if you tell me my past, it's you. Future, I'll tell you for one dollar. Nobody can say the future. This is all this is, uh, of course not. I'll tell you why. Because even if your future is decreed now, one way, Tomorrow it could be a different way. A person can change his future every single day. It says a person is judged every single day. Every single moment a person can change what his future is going to be. So there's no, there's no way for a person to possibly know. Right? Besides the fact that it's all a sketch. Right? It says, so therefore, if a person would nowadays go to all these different people, right, the horoscopes, if a person would listen to horoscopes, he would be over in Isidoraita. He'd be over in Isidoraita. Or these people, they come and they look at your arm. Oh, this is long life, this is wife, this is kids, this is this, this is that. Leave all these people alone, tell them to find something better to do with their lives. 
All this stuff is nonsense, and if a person does this stuff, he's over and it's the right by believing in all of the stupidity because now it's all fake. If you're going to tell me you went to somebody like that, Rizal, his whole life is fasting, he's learning Torah day and night, Kodesh Kodeshim, he learns what Eliyawan Avi, he has Chokhmata Pratuf, I tell you, right, right? But nowadays people don't have these things. Nowadays this is all a sketch. Who's going to come and tell you, yeah, I have Chokhmata Pratuf, I can look at your face, I can look at your head, I can tell you everything about yourself. But some people, they, they have something like this. She's like Bekon. In, in India or something like that, they do using the Tuma. So Kohot Tuma, that's, that's Astor Legamre over there, might be even worse, right? For example, if a person, this is Lotana Hashu, you're going to things that are, but if a person uses Avodah Zarah, that's Mamash Asur. Even if a person going to die, he's not allowed to do it, right? For example, I'll give you an example. What? So, uh, acupuncture. No, acupuncture is different. It's, uh, some people say that they use energy from the body. Yes, 100%. So acupuncture originally was designed with energies. Now some people now some people now will tell you that it's that it's nerves and this and that. So some people do it because of nerves. They believe that it's nerves. And uh, but the original methods, right, of the people, I forgot what it's called, Quan Chi or something like that. The original methods of acupuncture were really just based on beliefs and energies. When you go to somebody that's healing somebody or doing something based on a belief of energies, based on something that I cannot understand, I cannot see something that's not logical, something that you don't know where it's coming from, and they're doing something strange, you always have to be concerned that there's some sort of avodah zarah involved, and it'd be asur do right to do such thing, it'd be asur legamri. So if a person will come and tell you, I can heal you, there's energies around you, right? And he starts to do all these different weird stuff with his hands, and he starts to poke you needles, acupuncture, okay, look, look it up, you don't have to believe me, right? Some people tell me, no, Rabbi, it's not true. You go up a line, it's, it's clear. Right, St. John, St. John's University, whatever it is, they have a whole research on it, right? So what do they do? They believe that there's energies around the body, right? This is a separate issue. They believe that there's energies around the body, and they poke different holes on a person, they believe the energies enter the body and heal a person. So when you have something like this, that's an energy that you don't know exactly where they're getting this from, that'd be also because you always have to be concerned there's some sort of, some sort of avodah zarah here involved. Now, I, don't, I can't tell you whether acupuncture is 100% asur or not, but if your doctor tells you that it's a belief in energies, it's for sure asur. But some people tell you, no, it's something to do with the nervous system. I don't know who does what. Right? The, the difference is of opinion here. Right? It doesn't difference of opinion here. people that do acupuncture and they work in the hospital as well. <laughs> But they are praying, they are praying. My heel was bad. I went to three doctors, they said you have to do operation. I went to one chair, six years already, no problem. So this is, uh, you know, this is, they don't pray and you like, they put the nails. So I, I don't know, they're, they're different ones do differently. I can't really tell you. They work even in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So I do some guy that closes his eyes. I don't know what he does. He closes his eyes, I guess. He just maybe looks at the anatomy of a person and then then he puts the needles wherever he thinks it's supposed to be. If he sees your breathing is a little off, he says you, you're breathing from the top of your lungs and not from the bottom. He puts a needle in, and you start breathing like very... I'm going to tell you, there's there's a lot of... A lot of, the of there, is, there is There is a, something called the Sarno method. What method? Sarno method. Sarno method? Yes. There's a, there's a, a lot of the pains that a person is feeling in his body are all psychological. And there's a whole Sarno method it's called and it works and thousands of people do it and go through it. There's the rabbi called Rabbi Katz in Brooklyn. He gives a lecture on this I think once a month for four or five hours maybe. And he explains to everybody how to get out of their physical pains through psychologi psychologically. <laughs> what? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Right? I'm telling you. A lot of... A lot of so, 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 so I know many people that went there. People asked me to go there. So, so there is somebody that went there actually from the community. He asked me about it. He went there and he had some sort of issues. And he told me he went there and he said that it's working very well for him. That he was able to get himself out of it. What, what kind of uh, issues did he have then? Physical. He felt that there was something happening in a physical sense. He couldn't really point it out. But a lot of times things happen through psychological. This is known. Even, right, this is, uh, I spoke to Rabbi Yaakov Hilal about this also once. And he's much older than all of us here. He told me a lot of stuff is in people's minds. This is Dabra Yadua. By people. 
Sarno, 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 Sarno himself is a very old man who wrote his book, and it's very popular, and millions of people read it. It's a very popular method. Not everything. I'm not saying every single sickness in the world is psychological, but a lot of physical ailments that people go through, a lot of it is stemmed in psychology. But that's not the topic here. Right? The point being is, well, so he says over here, right, for a person to do different types of methods of asking the future, even if a person does it in a form like of a raffle, right, these type of things people should try to stay away from. People should try to stay away from these type of things. Now, I'm not saying that every way is also, there are certain ways that are mutter. There are certain ways that are mutter, right? Now, he says there are certain types of people, he says there are, there, there are post in that bring that nowadays, right, the other way around. It says, since everything nowadays is all fake and it's all a sketch and it's all just, uh, it's nothing, it's all baloney. Therefore, if a person would believe in it, he would just be believing in nothing and some nonsense and therefore there would be no iser in believing in all this nonsense. However, most people come out of that opinion, they say no, it still remains to be us, especially according to the Rambam. If a person would be believing in nonsense and stupidity and so on and so forth, it remains to be us the way it was and it always remains to be us. Now, that's according to the Rambam. The Shulchan Aruch brings something very interesting. After that was Halach Aleph in the Shulchan Aruch, right? Now we're going to get to Allah Chabet and the Shulchan Aruch. And there's a whole, all this, all this is in the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch says that there is a minhag. Now this minhag has a big machlok at the poskim exactly. What is the Shulchan Aruch saying? He's telling you that you're allowed to believe in it like Chila, or is it just that there is a hetta to, to rely on it? Or, because the Shulchan Aruch says the minhag is that we don't start anything new on Monday and Wednesday. We don't start anything new on Monday and Wednesday. The Shulchan Aruch says. Ah, uh, uh, we have to see. It says we don't start anything new, right, on Monday and Wednesday, and we don't get married. Rather, only in the fir- in the beginning of the month, the first half of the month, and not the second half of the month. And he says, and therefore, in yeshivas, the minhag is that they start learning on Rosh Chodesh, even though you're not allowed to believe in nichush. You're not allowed to believe in like we just said. If my bread fails, it's bad luck, right? If a deer walks, it's bad luck. Even though a person is not to believe in that, however, there are things that happen in life that is a siman for a person. That serve as a siman for a person. Right? Why, why you say this is the end of the month since somebody married this don't work? Why? Yeah. Let's see the Shulchan Aruch says, we have to see. Right? He says over here, you're not allowed to start any new type of a job or anything else new. However, this is not applying to mitzvot. We have to see why. Right? We have to see why. He says, why? Because on, on Monday and Thursday, the mazel of those days are very difficult. Right? There's no, there's the good, the mazel on those days are not so great. Right? Some that say that uh, those days, the mazalot that were created on those days were ma'adim and shaftai, which are very difficult mazalot on Monday and Thursday. So therefore, a person shouldn't start anything Monday and Thursday. Monday and Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday I'm sorry. If a, if a person starts something on Monday and Wednesday, it sort of like gets caught under a bad mazal. That's what the Shulchan Aruch seems to imply first. However, there are those post says of here that says that we were not... We don't concern for this minhag. We don't take it into consideration. You could start whenever you want, whenever you want. Why? Because there are poskim narot and isid or right to believe in this. Like we said, the Rambam. According to the Rambam, if a person would say, no, today's Monday, I don't start anything, it would be over an isid or right But the Rambam says that why? Do we have a minhag like this already? Right? There's what to rely on. We know that Monday and Wednesday is, is a difficult time to start something. And therefore, one end of it, you find poskim that say you could rely on this minhag that we don't start anything new. But according to the Rambam, it would be us sir, to start anything, it would be us sir, to believe in this minhag and to follow this minhag. And the Shulchan Aruch, when he brought this din, he just brought it to tell you that what? If people do it, they have what to rely on. Not that the Shulchan Aruch is telling you, you shouldn't start turning Monday and Wednesday. You shouldn't get married only in the beginning of the month. That's not what the Shulchan Aruch is telling you. He's telling you there is such a minhag that people rely on it. And if they rely on it, they have what to rely on. You don't have to go out and attack them. But really, I appear many post came, if a person would believe in such a thing and a person would react to it, there would be an issue to believe in such a thing. So Monday and Wednesday, you don't do what? Don't start anything start new. Start anything new. Don't start anything new. Yeah. Do you go by the Shulchan Aruch? Let's say Monday. Would you go by the Shulchan Aruch on Wednesday? But tomorrow I have to start a new job. Go start. You wouldn't. The guy needs to tell Go what start. What is Rambam saying? Rambam holds it in Easter. He said, stick to it. Rambam says you're allowed to. You're allowed to. So whoever holds Shulchan Aruch and 
Rambam right. There is an opinion. I mean, there is saying. It's a machloket, right? The Shulchan Aruch is telling you that if a, the Shulchan Aruch is telling you that if a person would want to rely on this minhag, he would not be over an isudor oh, right Minhag, you said. Yeah. This is a minhag. Correct. The Zohar says over here that we don't start anything Monday and Wednesday. It's, it's from the Zohar. It's based. He it says because there's, it's not a good siman Monday and Wednesday because that's when the Sitra Acher was created. The Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says that we don't start anything Monday and Wednesday because that's when Machloket and Gehenna was created. So now let me ask you, if, yeah, no, if, we, never, if we never believed in this, yeah, no. do we start believing in this because we just started believing in No. No, no, no. Uh, because okay. according to the Rambam, another post came, it's us to believe in this. That means that if a person wakes up on Monday and says, no, I'm not allowed to do this, bad luck. According to the Rambam, it's over in Isser. But if a person would want to do it, the Shukhan Aruch says you could rely on the Minhag. But if a person doesn't want to do it, it's also good. So I, I, I never relied on it, I don't have to rely on it, but I just <laughs> no. live life regularly. Correct. Yeah. It's based on the Zohar and Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar and based on the Ramban mainly. The Ramban says any time that a person knows that something is against Mazel or something is difficult or is there is judgment or something like that, a person shouldn't rely on miracles and do it anyways and say, oh, it's okay, everything's going to be okay. Right? The person has to take into consideration and not go against the mazal. That's the Ramban's opinion. Right? Right? That was the Ramban's opinion. So therefore, based on that Ramban, a people would follow this manhag. Based on the Zohar, based on the Bechai, but based on the Rambam and everybody else that looks like the Rambam, they would be over and the right that they would not follow this opinion. Right? They would just tell you, move on with life normally and that's it. Right, the next Shulchan Aruch says, right, so Lama say, whatever a person would want to do, he would have what to rely on. The truth is, the Gemara says that a person shouldn't lend people his wallet. Don't lend people your wallet. What do you mean lend? Somebody comes and tell, somebody comes and tells you, can I get twenty dollars? You tell me, I take my wallet, just bring it back later. With all the money. With all the money, everything inside. Why? It says when a person gives away his wallet with all the money inside, he sort of, uh, he, it affects his muzzle in a negative way. It's a Gemara. It could be a parent or a child, no? Anybody. 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 So, so, so the truth is that, uh, that, uh, so he's fine that there are certain things that you do for Simon in Rosh Hashanah. All of Rosh Hashanah, the whole night, we're doing simanim. Eat this, don't eat this, eat that, eat this, eat that. Yeah. The Benish Chai is a whole tshuva, a pikabala, how that works. But it's a different tshuva, that's a different topic. But you, you find that sometimes we do simanim, sometimes we don't do simanim. What's the, what's the gather? What's the gather? When is it allowed, when is it not allowed? So simply, you're not allowed to believe in anything that doesn't have any logical reasoning to it. Something that you can't believe. Something that comes from a source that you're not sure where it came from. All those type of things that is, are a sur. But if you see that something is sourced in the Gemara, right? If you see that something is sourced in the Gemara, or you see that a certain belief is quoted in the Gemara, right? So these type of things, you want to be choshish for it, you can be choshish for it, because it's in Chazal, right? The Rajba, I believe, says, right? Oh, you're a min chaditchak, right? And it's safer, that even though there's no source not to eat the end of the bread, right? 
Some that say the end of the bread, the first piece, don't eat. Why? It's bad for memory. There's no source for it. Rav Yitzchak Yosef says, uh, Rav Yitzchak Y says that even though there's no source for it, I still do it because anything that people are concerned about, I take into consideration. It's based on the Gemara in Yerushalmi. The Gemara in Yerushalmi says that when you find people and people are concerned over something and people take a certain type of superstition into consideration, right, a person, should, a person is allowed to be able to take it into consideration and not to go against it. Of course, assuming that this that people are believing in is not sourced in a Goyish Minak, for example, 40 days after the wedding, right, uh, Chilean. Right, that's Asur, that's Chukot Agoyim already. That's Muslim. That's uh, Muslim. It's, 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 it's the Tumadik and Minhag. Rabbi Shimon Mutafi goes against it completely. Right, he says it's completely Asur to believe in such a thing. So a person would react to that and believe to that. That we know is sourced already in the Tumah. That we don't do. That would be Asur. But things that are don't, uh, not something that's, you know, bad. or We don't see that it's in any way uh, connected to Avodah Zarah. Person, people are concerned for it and Choshish for it. And there would be maybe some room to be chashish for it. But it says, Shulchan Aruch says the next halacha, right? I'll tell you. So, Rabbi, are, you, are, you, are we allowed to do this pandu? I don't think so. Also not. No, definitely not. I think it's Aster. I'll tell you even something more. I don't even think it's mutar to hang up dollar bills in the store. Why? People come to the store. This is my first $20 bill that came into the store. Pichari, put it on the wall. Good luck. What are you believing in? How come the, some people do the, the uh, Rabbi Lubavitch one dollar bill? Is that any significance? No, this that? is from the Rabbi. This is huge. When, when, when the Rabbi, first of all, when the Rabbi gives you a bill, he gave it a barachas, the bracha v'atzlacha, so it makes him feel good that the Rabbi held his dollar, I'm holding when it. you go to somebody, <laughs> right? If you go but if somebody gave you the first dollar bill, you hang it up in your store and you believe that it's good luck, you're believing in a belief that doesn't make sense. It's an illogical you belief. You open up a new office, search condition office. I mean, he's a business to open up a nice office and you, as a cousin, come to him. Do you give him $20 for good luck? No. You, don't. you, give, you give him some gift if you want to give for something for a store, but that uh, mezuzah or something. But I, 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 saw, well, Rabbi, I saw something unusual. I come to Bukharan people, to the house, the new opening house. They do his fadud in front of you, like this. I said, are you crazy people? What are you doing? Don't invite people if you don't Ispando. believe in this sign It's stupidity. Ispandu is a very strange belief. I have not one clue how it's mutar because it's, they do a lot of weird stuff. They make you hug a tree afterwards. Seems to me like it's from Abu Dhar Some people say it's for antibacterial reasons. This is now. Bullshit. This is all for bullshit. It's going to be It's baloney. It's the biggest baloney it could be. I think that it's a suit. It's under respect to the people. Right. To do this kind of shit. It's bullshit. <laughs> A person eating, a person's eating bread and the bread fell from his mouth and he says, oh, this is bad luck. Or a person, right, that's walking with a stick or a person that an animal or something walks in front of him and says, this is bad luck, I'm not going to go, they're not going to start. Right, or people that take animals or people that say different types of words and they do things with different beliefs and different things and they start to believe in it and start to believe in different energies. Right, he says, all that is a sur. Or if somebody comes to you in the morning and says, can I get money? He says, no, early in the morning I just woke up. The first thing I do, I don't give. Right? I don't give. I don't give. I don't give. Why? I'm scared. This is a new beginning. He says, all these different types of beliefs are all going to be a sur. All these new beliefs, all these superstitions, all these beliefs, all these things are going to be a sur. Why? Because you're believing in something that's illogical. You're believing in some sort of energy. You're believing in something that's ridiculous. Right? So any of these types of beliefs are a sur. I tell you, I, a lot of people, they like weird stuff. I'm being very honest with you. People like weird stuff. Somebody one time told me, the rabbi, I had Hanukkah I had a whole bunch of people come to my house. They went to every room and they were blowing the shofar with the minyan and they were screaming something, right? I was like, okay. He's like, do you know how to do that type of stuff? I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, you fool. All they wanted is your money, they played you, right? But I didn't say anything to him, right? Why well, didn't say? You shouldn't say. But because then he's going to think, I'm a fool. He's going to think, no, Rabbi, you just don't understand. They didn't do it for free. They didn't do it for free, right? And they went to every room and he told, me, he told, him, and he told me why... He told me, you know why? He said they were going out and taking all the demons from my house, he's saying. What demons? You have to use oh, demons, what your house? People, you have, you have to use your seichel. No, you're going too harsh. You have to use your seichel. Kind of you, you, kind of you, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to live a Jew like a simple Jew. 
But you have to leave all these weird beliefs alone. Tamim tiyem Hashem lokecha. That's what I'm saying. My point being is, is to correct those ways that are strange. People get affected by strange things. They think something is happening. What? Sometimes people, some yes, some no. People, people building the biggest house here. Yeah. And they put plastic in front of the house. Like they think that this plastic is going to save them. It's stupidity. I don't know plastic. How can you believe, how you can believe these kind of things? So I there are plastic I know they put in front of the house. So there are there are they put a big red string around. No, there are there are different sigulo that I mentioned. There are different sigulo that I mentioned in the in the in the Gemara, there are different sigulo mentioned in the Mikubalim. There are certain sigulo that I mentioned. Right? The Benish Chai says if a person takes a piece of silver and he makes it into an image of a fish and he wears it, it's a sugula against Sain Haram. So you find that there are different things that are sourced in the Kiddushan. So if people want to be concerned for it, that's a little bit different, right? But when people are believing in, in, in strange things that make no sense, that have no logic to them, there the Zohar says, right, that a person that takes a child outside, he puts a blue, blue, blue hat on him, something blue, something the color of the chelet, it protects the kid from my heart, it's based on the Zohar, right? So you find certain things that have a source, but many things that don't have a source, and people do it, it's completely wrong. The red string is a machloket achron and whether or not you're allowed to do it. It's also a sort of a, a suit. That's a whether you're not to do it. That's a machloket whether or not it's considered like darche hai moiri, like something that the goyim do in order to believe, so like some sort of a sorcery. And some that say, no, since the minog of the woman, there is such a mesoira, and therefore it's allowed and it's mutar. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Ayn har doesn't work like that. A string won't just protect a person from ayn har. <laughs> ayn har is something very complex. That this year, one day we'll discuss Ayn Har in depth and we'll explain how it works and what it is and why Hashem created it in the world. And then you'll understand why the red string doesn't help. Of course, it's Ayn Har. I, I, I want to tell you something. This one rabbi came to our shul and he said about Ayn Har something unbelievable. Yeah. He said, This Ayn Har exists. He said, Of course, this exists. We see it every morning. We see it. We see it. And uh, you said, But Sadiq, you know this uh, and everything. He said, Ayn Har exists. If the father go to the Aliyah to the Torah, son gonna that doesn't go after him. Because why? Because I know. Nara, it's true. Five brothers sit in the shoe, five brothers put them separate. Don't put them together. I know. Yaakov Avino. But they ask questions. He said, how come? How come? How come the Kohanim, that the whole family go to the over there and they bless Am Israel? You see them over there. Brothers. There's no Torah either, huh? He said, this is different. The difference is, they say, the Barakat Amo Israel Ba'ava. It says, Ava in Gimatra is 13. If you love your wife and you love your wife, you love you together, 26. But when you cheat in your wife and your wife cheat in you, it's the same thing like immune system is weak. And then it's not going to come to you. That's the only problem. Tough.